Oregon RFID has specialized in pit tag technology since 2003. We have manufacturing, shipping, and support offices in Oregon and Germany. We have certified installation partners in North America, South America, Europe, and Asia. Pit tags are a useful tool for fisheries research. They can identify individuals in large population. They allow for fish passage assessment and monitoring, movement ecology, fisheries management, animal behavior studies, mark recapture studies where the animal is only handled once, and they're also fairly inexpensive. The advantages of half duplex technology is it's an uncomplicated system that allows it to be suitable for self-installation. The antennas are simple wire loops that can be from a few centimeters in diameter to 55 meters across. The cable just needs to have insulation to protect the copper, but it can be put inside tubing, hose, plastic pipe for protection and add structure. Half duplex uses a pulse charge field that reduces power consumption, and it allows you to adjust the read speed to control the amount of power used. Half duplex uses FM signals for good performance in noisy location. This means the tag sends two different tones, ones and for ones and zeros, as it beeps and boops. Vince Tranquilli at Oregon Fish and Wildlife is a master half duplex antenna designer who builds large stream antennas in beautiful locations. He currently holds the record for the largest loop, 57 meters across. Antennas can be spent, suspended on a simple cable frame, as on the left. Uh, the wire can also be placed inside any non-metallic material, such as plastic, fiberglass, concrete, or wood for added protection. This is an 8.5 by 1 meter antenna that's in PVC pipe with a small solar panel, batteries, and the reader on the post. On the right is a large culvert antenna. The cross piece is the upper wire. The lower wire follows the curve of the culvert laying inside the ripple, all inside PVC pipe. In order to cover a tall and wide scan zone, this antenna was designed as three four and a half by five and a half meter frames that each have four loops inside for a total of 12 individual antennas. This is a pumping station uh, into the North Sea in the Netherlands to allow for fish migration. Our customers have developed some very innovative designs. This is a floating antenna carried over a stream. This can be used to count fish uh, in between two seines. Uh, it's also used to map locations of particles, rocks, uh, that you do periodically, and then you can track their movement over time. On the right is the antenna around the bow of a kayak uh, with a solar panel behind and the readers inside the kayak. This stop action video from an installation in Brazil shows setting up an antenna to test the design. It's recommended to do this on land first before installing it at the site. It's being temporarily attached to the rope using pieces of tape. Once the loop is assembled, you twist the tails. This is very important in order to keep the inductance even. Lastly, you attach an LCR meter to read the loop inductance to make sure it's within the tuning range. After the antenna is ready, the loop is attached to the cable using plastic tie wraps in this setup. Here are pit tag sizes, the 2x12, which is the size used for dogs and cats, 
the 3x14, which has better read range, a 3.8x23, which has even better read range, and a 3.8x32mm, which has the best read range of all of our glass tags. The size of the tag directly relates to the read range you're going to get. Pit tags have no internal power source. They're an electronic circuit sealed inside a glass capsule that's only powered when it's red. This allows for an indefinite lifetime. Basically, they will operate until the glass capsule is broken. Uh, decades is not an unreasonable assumption. Uh, they work around electrofishing equipment. They will uh, not be destroyed by them. Uh, they've been used to tag electric eels and they work. Very durable. Half duplex allows you to adjust the read speed. The reader sends out a short magnetic charge pulse, which shuts off. And during that time, the tag used the stored power to return the ID. Adjusting the read speed for faster would allow you to detect higher velocity tags, or you can slow it down to reduce the overall power consumption of the reader. The read speed is adjusted on our readers with the HD command. 10 scans per second, 2 scans per second, 25 scans per second, 40 scans per second. So let's assemble a, a half duplex pit tag system. First you start with a loop of wire that generates a magnetic field. The shape can be a circle rectangle or an irregular shape as long as it's in a loop. The simplest antenna is a loop of wire suspended vertically so that tags pass through it, but the antenna can also lie flat so that the tags pass over it. Capacitors are added to the loop to make a resonant electronic circuit that will ring like a bell. The energy is stored in two different ways, both magnetic and electronic. Because they happen in different phases, this causes oscillation or ringing. The magnetic field builds up in the antenna. It collapses and goes into the electronic form in the capacitors, which goes back into the antenna again. Because of this, you want to keep the wire between the tuning capacitors and the antenna loop as short as practical to keep the power from being lost. The reader provides the energy to cause that circuit to resonate. Long lengths of twin X, which can be up to 150 meters long, are used to power the circuit of the tuning capacitor and antenna. The reader is powered by 12 volts DC. Power needs to be clean, no ripple, no, no oscillations. Uh, you can go up to 20 volts and get a little increase in read range sometimes, depending on the antenna. And the reader has a console that's used to configure and control the reader as well as to collect your data. It can be accessed from the serial port using the USB to serial cable or wirelessly through the Bluetooth serial port. Our long range half duplex pit tag readers are the ORSR single antenna reader and the ORMR multiple antenna reader. They're one all in one systems that include a data logger, networking interface, they have automatic shutdown on low voltage. It's a complete monitoring station. The reader is sealed in a lightweight metal enclosure with watertight connectors. Both readers have a GNSS satellite radio. It can record tag locations with each detection, and it also has an accurate time of day. The ORMR includes a serial Bluetooth port for wireless access. Bluetooth is an option on the ORSR. We also have a kit that converts the ORSR for mobile operation. It includes a lightweight lithium battery that will operate for four hours at 10 scans per second. If you slow the reader down to five scans per second, you'll double the runtime. The GNSS signal from the satellite synchronizes the charge pulses so that multiple mobile readers can be used together. And you can also walk through a stationary site with a mobile reader and everything is synchronized. By synchronizing, the charge pulses are on and off at the same time so they don't interfere with each other. Our mobile reader has a unique proximity beep mode 
to help you locate tags. It uses the strength of the tag signal to modulate the beep speed. You can use BlueTerm on the left to wirelessly connect to the command console. We also have a graphic interface on an that can be used on an Android tablet or phone using Bluetooth. Uh, it's available in the Google Play Store. Either way allows you to change the reader settings. You can load and store your log files. Once they're loaded onto the tablet, you can email them, upload them to cloud services. You can also from here tune and analyze antennas. Pit tag readers generate a lot of data. Uh, one of our partners in Holland, Vis-a-Vis -vis, has developed a wireless internet module. It's a box that attaches to our reader to take the data out, upload it to cloud services, and then through their interface, uh, visualize your detection data. We also uh, have uh, an R package for managing the data. It has functions to manage, summarize pit tag data from our readers. It's available on the GitHub address down below. We have extensive customer support. We have a technical support team to help you, available by email. We have an extensive help desk with an FAQ that's online. We offer pit tag classes on site. We have a YouTube channel that shows videos of our systems. You can contact us at support at OregonRFID.com and I encourage you to sign up to our mailing list to receive announcements. Thank you.